Well, good afternoon, folks. Here is a, another video. I'm quite prolific these days, have you noticed? Um, as you'll know, in my little videos, I put my email address and I, I get a load of emails from lots and lots of um, Royal Enfield riders, right, right around the world, actually, loads of different places. Um, and I've done quite a few videos now on YouTube. Um, and the video I'm going to do now is covering something I've done already, which is uh, a bit of an in-depth look at replacing the left-hand side switch gear of the bike. People have noticed that my switch gear is not the same as theirs, and um, rather than sort of scroll through all of my videos, my boring videos, um, that would be enough to send any normal person to sleep. In fact, I, somebody did contact me and say they play my videos at night to help them nod off. <laughs> so I'm glad they're good for something. Um, so yeah, somebody's contacted me and said, oh, your switch gear's different. Well, rather than say, scroll down through all of my boring videos and find the relevant video, I've, I'll just do a little update today. And this is, basically, I had problems with the standard switch gear on my bike and decided that I'd wanted to replace both sets of switch gear, right and left, with switches from classic bikes, cast alloy. Now that picture there shows the left hand side, which is what the video I'm talking about today, that is an FJ1200 cast alloy switch. The right hand side is off a Honda CM400, um, but I'm looking into using an FJ1200 throttle tube and so on. I've just about cracked it to be honest, I've just about done it. I'll post a video on that because you'll notice the style of those two switches a bit different. You've got a boxy look on the left and a kind of Honda rounded one on the right. So I'm working on actually putting an FJ1200 switch gear on the right hand side as well. Now the functionality of the FJ1200 switch on the left is exactly the same as the Royal Enfield but it's a cast alloy switch it's from 1986 or 1987, um, so they're old, but they are vastly, vastly superior to the Royal Enfield switches. Now, I know I'm going to offend some people, possibly. Um, I'm not deliberately trying to, um, but once I show you some pictures of the innards of the Royal Enfield switch, you'll maybe understand why I had problems. And my indicator cancel was crunchy, uh, it was horrible to use, and um, the horn switch, you know, just felt feeble. And yeah, and it's a budget bike. I love my bike. You love your bike. I'm not slagging it off. Or mine or yours, actually. Um, they're just cheap switches. And if you look here, this next photo shows a little bit of an autopsy. Can you see that? Now they're all like little Morse code tappers. They're all they're, they're like the simplest of switch you can think of and the contacts themselves are very small they're about I would say half the diameter of the Japanese switch gear so the contact surface is very small now this is I, I did a modified switch for Len Hartley um, he's got it installed on his bike and I think he posted a comment to that effect this is his old switch gear I, I stripped it down um, look at that that's the starter button, I think. Uh, this is only a three-year-old bike. It's got a raised nipple. Oh dear, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, can I? Uh, ooh, I might get barred. Right, no, it's not It's not a, one of them. It's a little lump. And that's, that's from arcing across the contact. You know, obviously if that were ignition points in the old days, you'd have a capacitor that would absorb the excess current so every time a spark jumps across that it's taking a tiny little bit of metal with it and building up one side and making a little cavity corresponding on the other side so that's you know that's my starter button wouldn't even work half the time because of the sheer amount of filth you can see that there look again the raised area that's either the horn or it's the starter button I know with my bike, I, I literally, I was having to sp put my thumb on the starter button and turn it, spin it in the housing to try to get that crud off to make the starter motor work. 
And like I say, the left-hand side was, was awful to use. I just I hated the switch gear on it. So um, maybe your switches are fine. I mean, when I first posted about this modification, somebody said, oh, my switches are fine. Well, great. I mean, I'm very pleased for you. Um, however, Len's got them on his, loves it, because it, it's just so much smoother on the, on the um, indicator switch especially, you know, the cancel. There's another picture of one of these little Morse code tappers again. I don't know which one that is. They're all the same. Um, you can see, this, it's not particularly a clear photo because I'm rubbish at it, but it's dark, isn't it? It's like a darkened circular area on that. So my idea was to replace the modern plastic switch gear with decent quality cast alloy um, which I then did and I've just done another one today I've upped my game a bit because now I've sussed out what wires go where when I did lens switch which is this in this next photo here's the indicator bit very plasticky uh, when I did lens I got him to send me his old switch and I desoldered the original wiring harness there that you can see and resoldered all every single switch so the fj1200 switches all come apart they have little springs ball bearing detents on them um, they've got solid copper contacts um, the indicator slidey one is a piece of solid copper which the end fields are plated and they're just so much better so yeah i've upped my game a bit because i can now just get the switch gear from an fj1200 I found the correct block connector, so it goes straight, plug and play, straight into the wiring harness. So here is, that's the, uh, the innards of lens switch. And here, if you look at this one, slightly blurred, but look at the corrosion on the pivot point. On the left there. I mean, that's me, I took the wires off it, I desoldered the wires, but it's a right mess. Um, that's all crusty crud around that articulating bit on the left hand side there. I should have taken more pictures, um, but I was so shocked I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. That was enough. Um, they're all like that inside. So, again, I'm not slagging the bike off. You know it's cheap, we know it's not expensive. And I'm sure people have got switch gear that works fine. Yeah, but mine didn't. Now, here is a thing of beauty indeed. Now that is the cast alloy of a an FJ1200 left hand switch. So it's got the same functionality, it's got dip, flash, indicators and horn. Except that is cast alloy. So it's much more solid, a lot more rigid. It's got clamps on the inside where it grips onto the bars, you know, it's straight onto the standard bars that fit onto the Enfield bars straight away. If you look at this, just as a little, that's the indicator mechanism. Now you can see it articulates, it's got grease. I, I, what, I've done, what I've done with this switch is to strip every single switch out of it, um, clean everything. I use a product called Deoxit which is um, a spray tin that is probably about as expensive as gold by weight. It's 22 quid for a 50 mil tin, I think. 25 mil tin, it's tiny. But what it does is it gets all the oxidisation off electrical contacts. Absolutely fantastic. Um, there is the inner sleeve so that protects the wiring from the handlebars that goes inside the switch you'll see that's part of the indicator switch lurking under there with three contacts on it so I take these switches apart that plastic switch will come entirely to pieces the metal comes out the whole lot and then what I do is clean the ball bearing detent spring clean the contacts with deoxit which gets all the crud off. It's really amazing stuff on a wiring harness. It's, it's well worth the money. Um, and then it's a case of doing that to every single moving part, greasing them in the right places so they feel nice and smooth to operate them. This picture here is the indicator self-cancel mechanism. That sort of inverted pyramid thing 
um, the, the the lever I should picture show, picture I showed you earlier has got two arms on it, and and that's what when you push when you push the the um, indicator switch forward, the arms bring that to the middle position, so that needs to be greased. Now you'll notice the soldering on that wasn't very good because my soldering iron was rubbish. I've now got a new one and I'm going to post a video about that. Recom recommended by Len and his mate Jez who know what they're on about. So there's my switch gear and it is truly far better. Now I'm not doing a sales pitch here however I have one of these switches which I've refurbed done everything to it exactly as I've outlined in this video and it is a straight plug and play Len had to say well I, originally I said send me a switch and I de as I say I disconnected all the wires and got it well now I, could, I just got the right size block connector and uh, drove myself potty this morning um, testing it on my own bike because there's a nine pin block connector that fits in the headlamp shell of the Royal Enfield and I thought, yep, done it, cracked it. Went outside, put it in the on the bike, yep, headlamp flasher, great, dip beam, yeah, horn, no indicators. So I came back and changed the pins round, and then when you indicate right, it was flashing left. And I realised that um, it's very easy to get the wires mixed up. Anyway, it's all done now. It's plug and play. It's tested on my bike, works perfectly, refurbed. So if anybody wants to buy it, and I'm not trying to sell it, but if you've got problems with your left-hand switch, or if you want what I think is a far nicer riding experience without crunchy indicators, then all you've got to do is email me. It'll be in the description of this video, and I will gladly send it off. And literally, I've, I've, this morning, I've literally put it on my bike I removed my switch, the one in that picture there, um, connected up the the one that I've refurbed, and absolutely bang on. It's the original, you know, block connector and anything, everything. So it's not you don't have to butcher your wiring harness at all. It just plugs straight in. So that's the effect, that's the general appearance on my bike. Looked at from the front, mine's got a lot of dead flies on it. Look, so that according to the myth I must have been doing 70 miles an hour apparently I don't know if that applies to insects in other parts of the planet but certainly in the UK there's an urban myth that you have to be doing 70 miles an hour to have a fly splat on anything you'll see there's a rather horrible looking threaded hole there which is from my old mirrors because I've now got the bar end mirrors, of course. He says smugly. They are fantastic, though. What a what a rear view on them. So I'm 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 reticent to pay 14 quid to Hitchcock's for a reverse thread nine mil bolt and a and a nine mil normal thread. It's just it's with postage. 14 quid for two bolts. No, no, no. So I'm going to do something about that. I might just fill it with car body filler and spray it black. So. That's what they look. That's what the switch looks like on my bike. As I say, it's a delight to use. Um, here is a picture of the refurbed one that I've just been harping on about. So there it is. Look. The only thing I do, I don't, I, I can't put little on-off, you know, high beam stickers on it. Um, I, I just do the the off one, and that's it. Um, a bit of white paint really I mean to be honest you know instinctively don't you don't need a you don't dry ride along at 60 miles an hour and think oh I'm going to flash that person in front I'd better look at the writing on my switch to find out the one that says flash you know or I'm going to dip my headlamps now what does the switch say no you don't do that you just instinctively know don't you so the only thing I do is the off one even that I only do it because it's easy to put white paint in it and rub it off so there you go that is the actual switch it's FJ 1200 it's the original factory soldering it has got the block connector on the other end you'll see that little brass plated connector there in the middle from a previous project 
and that will clamp straight on. If you look at that switch as well, can you see the clear plastic sleeve on the bottom half, look? And what that does is, it, it, I think it, there are no particular electrical contacts there. There, there is the indicator um, switch, but that's quite low down. I think the purpose of that little shield there is to stop just general filth going into it, because it's, obviously it's got a metal moving parts to it to, uh, to move the the uh, connector across for the indicators but it's so smooth it really is it's just what a difference I mean when Len sent me his switch I was fiddling with the with the indicator one you know and pushing it as clicking and then it wasn't and just horrible so but there you go enough said I don't want to slag it off too much there we go so there is the switch again you got your dip switch is grey and that just that just goes straight on and rather fortuitously the the cables that come with the FJ1200 switch are exactly long enough to go into the headlamp. So it's perfect. So there you have it, um, pot pickers, not off. Um, if somebody wants it, let me know. Email me. Don't all rush at once. Form an orderly queue. I've only got one. It's a lot of work, actually. But as you'll know from my little channel, I don't mind mucking about and certainly Len's delighted with his and I, I am with mine it's been on for yonks well what I'm going to do is as I say watch out for a future project which will be doing the right hand side one that's a little bit more involved I've cracked it I know how to do it I've got the FJ1200 switch which I'm going to take to bits and renovate like that one do all the innards and all that um, the only issue with the FJ1200 right hand side um, is the length of the push cable on the throttle. Now, in the old days, when I were young, you only had a pull cable on the, th on the throttle. That's all you had. You just wound it back and let it go. And the Royal Enfield has a very powerful spring on it, I've noticed. However, the Japanese introduced the push cable, which is not entirely an accurate description, but people call it that. And basically, when you twist it, you throttle off. You, 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 it's a little, uh, supposedly a fail safe just in case your throttle sticks. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. So I'm, I'm tempted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get Venhill to make me a cable that's just one centimetre longer on the push cable. That's all it is. It's one centimetre. That's all it is. Really annoying. Um, and then I'm going to run the bike just with the pull cable and uh, do that mod. And I'll show you the results. Yeah, there's the block connector as fitted by yours truly this morning. I've tidied up the actual um, sheathing on that. So yeah, that's the, the project will be to do the right hand side. At the moment, the CM400 operates using the standard cables for the Royal Enfield, which is handy. Um, the switch is not the same style as the FJ1200. It's a bit more rounded, Honda-ish. Um, so to some people's eye, they think it, you know, thinking it looks a bit inconsistent. So I think it will be better to have an FJ1200. So it's the entire thing, throttle tube, a lot, and the switch gear. I'll use the wiring harness that's on it now that I'm a wiring wizard, and I shall do that, and I shall post a, a future update, probably in the next several days or so. Here we are. So there's a final shot of uh, my little baby. Those mirrors, I can't stress enough. Absolutely. Can't believe it. You can see, like, virtually the entire behind you with just one of them. The field of view is amazing. Um, so there it is. I left the bike out in the rain just to check on the corrosion. And if I find anything that rusts, I put stainless on it. So I didn't find anything, apart from the steering yoke at the bottom. You know, where the bolts go through. It's pretty rubbish, actually, the paint on that. But there we go. Never mind, we can't have everything. So, I'm sure you're out on your bikes. Take care. Watch out for those loonies that come up to junctions and don't stop. And all the other hazards that are out there. And I will speak to you very, very soon. Watch out for my little video about the FJ1200 throttle and also... I'm going to do a video about my new soldering iron, because it's great. Take care.